Every step I take, I move my truth Every time they tell me stop, I use Every comment, hate that makes my feel Gather up my energy and boom I hear them talking, saying the way that I move is so reckless That is a part of my mind I've been blessed with Giving my blood so I am relentless Alright That was kind of like a Wasn't really a <laughs> That's the start of the show This is a Keep Hammering Collective It's sort of a weekend update, isn't it? I think it is, yeah. I mean, well, we'll include Monday. Yeah. So we can, yeah. Long weekend update. Right. And uh, man, some crazy stuff going on. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So you you have some things on your mind. I do. Yeah. I have some things to ask you, some things to uh, get through. Okay. Um, I don't want to make a big deal of this, but I think I'm the first repeat guest. Ooh, are you? I think so. Gideon is a is a repeat. <laughs> the king of the hobbits is the first repeat. <laughs> well, you know what? I Trace read to me in the Bible this morning something about I guess Gideon was a badass. Well, I'm falling short of that, but <laughs> <laughs> well, so I didn't I learned something because of your name. Well, there you go. So thank you. You're yeah. welcome. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we got the the Gideon repeat. Um and yeah, it's an honor to have you here twice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's jump into this. Um, obviously, this weekend, some some big news. A, a first happened with mm -hmm. Jasmine Paris being the first woman to finish the Barkley Marathons. We spoke to the first woman to ever finish the grueling Barkley Marathons. This year was Paris's third attempt at finishing. Last year, she made history as the first woman to complete Loop 4, but she missed that cutoff time, so she came back this year determined to finish. What do you, what do you think about that? That's insane. Yeah, I mean, it is, it's been so hard and I heard, or I read that because I think three people finished last year that Laz changed the course, made it even tougher. And then five people, including the first woman finished the, Bar the Barclays marathon or Barclay marathons, I think is how they say it. I don't, I don't know why, but it's uh, one of those is plural either way, whether it's one or many, it's hard. Yeah. A woman, and I, you know, some of the best ultra runners in the world have attempted it. And to get Jasmine to finish the, the first time, I think she's, I don't know what country she's from. Not She's not from here. I couldn't tell. I mean, every post I saw about her, she wasn't even tagged. So I'm not oh. sure she has an Instagram even. Yeah, it shouldn't count then. <laughs> I mean, if you can't brag on it on social media, I mean, does it count? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what makes it so hard? It's the... Uh, and again, I haven't done it. I've watched the documentaries. I've talked to Courtney about it. It's uh, the navigation. So, and in that country, it's not like out West where you have like peaks you can orientate yourself right. to and, or drainages. I mean, there's drainages, but it's, there's no big visuals to use. And then if it gets, so you can imagine being in the timber or in the woods and there's nothing that really stands out and you have to go and find these books that are hidden in a roughly 20 mile loop is what I understand it. So it's supposed to be five 20 mile loops, but I've heard also that it's close to or 120 to 130 miles. And so there's no real, I'm sure somebody knows, but the runners don't know. Anyway, you do these five loops and you got to find the, I think 12 books per loop that are in just random places. And there's no map of the race or they have a map, you can't use any phone, you can't use like an Onyx, you can't use anything that's gonna tell you where you're at. You have to make your own map on paper based off the the main master map. And then that's what you go by. And so then you're out there and obviously if you made your own map, it's not to scale or it's not, right. you know, it's hard to get contour lines. So that part, the navigating part, and then the country's pretty rugged. It's it's steeper than you might imagine in Tennessee and, uh, and brushy, a lot of thorns. I see people get their legs and, and arms torn up. Um, there's a 60 hour time limit. And I think she came through at with 99 seconds left. That's, I mean, barely, yeah. but she did get the finish and it is just incredible. Yeah. I mean, I saw the, the photos of her touching that yellow gate and, mm -hmm. I mean, she looked like those were the last steps she had to give. Oh man, yeah. I, so tough. Yeah. I mean, and and she's getting a, a lot of um, attention, and she should, because I know. But but also before I 
delve into that topic of her, there's still four other people who did it, which yeah, man, right. they kicked ass that, that run, that race is not easy. And, uh, then for her, I mean, Laz, I saw a clip yesterday where Laz was saying, um, uh, he doesn't think a woman will ever finish it. It's too tough for women. And he's like, he's just going to keep saying that until somebody proves him wrong. You know, it's kind of like a little, it's sort of like motivation yeah, for right, women. Right. Because these, these women that do this are not normal. They're freaking beasts, tough. Um, you know, you can't get in that race at all unless you're, you know, elite. So, uh, yeah, it takes, it takes the best of the best. And then she stood out, was the first one to do it. So I'm, I'm sure he loved it. You know, he was, you know, doing a little goading and saying too tough for a woman, but he wanted to see it, I'm sure. Right. I don't know him, but I'm guessing. And uh, and that was, you know, just enough to push people. And I don't know if she used that as motivation, probably not, because you have to have your own internal motivation to do things like that. But so impressed with her finish and it's pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah, I know one of the guys, that's like his fourth time finishing. Really? I think Jared, yeah. Yeah, he's a four-time finisher, which mm. is, I guess, the most out of Man. anyone. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. Well, while I was on that, the kind of running rabbit hole of Instagram, I came across somebody named the Hardest Geezer, mm. who's running the length of Africa, has been yeah. running for, I think, 300 and maybe 40 days. Right. Something I, like that. I've been following along on his journey too. Just a stud. Yeah. Yeah. He's got like red hair, red beard. Yeah. And he, uh, you know, that's not even across Africa. Most people, like even when they do the U.S., I mean, I guess the U.S. across is a long way. But uh, in Africa, across would be shorter. I'm almost certain. But he's going the length of it, which is crazy amount of distance. I can't even remember how. Do you remember how far? Was it 7,000 miles? It's something ridiculous. And I know he's he followed the West Coast and then even kind of into that where Africa juts out. He didn't just take a straight line. No. So, yeah. No, it's uh, that's incredible what he's doing. And with not near the fanfare of, you know, if you run across America, a lot of people pay right. attention. Or when Ned, Ned Brockman, one of my earlier guests, he ran across Australia and he got a lot of attention. Yeah. It's like Africa, I don't know if it's, I don't know, I maybe he is getting a lot of coverage. I haven't seen it, but right. maybe in other places he is, but uh, it seems like not as many people are keeping track of it and it's incredible. And maybe because it's been going on for almost yeah. a year. <laughs> you know, we're with social media, you know, our attention span is like what, seven seconds yeah. they say? So yeah, 300 days, it's gonna be tough. I mean, yeah. but yeah, he's, man, just incredible that, I mean, just to get up every day and know that it's going to be a, this long of a grind. Oh. I mean, because even to run across America, I think the record is 42 days. It'd be easier to be right. like, okay, I gotta be on my A game for a little over a month. Right. It's doable, but a year. Yeah. Yeah. And this, I mean, I saw, he posted the other day, days, I think 330 through 337, and he was still running like 76 kilometers a day, which hmm. I don't know what that comes out to in miles, but probably like 50 plus. Well, 100K is 60, 60 miles. 62 miles. 62. Yeah. So I don't know, 50 miles probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, could fig I could figure it out. But yeah, I mean, even if it's 50 miles. So, well, I can do it in my head. So 50 miles is... 7.6 times 6 would give you the... 60%. Oh, okay. So yeah, it'd be a little <laughs> under 50 maybe. Yeah. I think just shy of 50. Yeah. That's a, it's a good effort. Yeah. Especially in Africa. Yeah. It's usually, I don't know. I mean, you're going to get some hot times if you go for the whole year. There might be some better times, but even in the winter, you got the monsoons that come oh, through. Yeah. Or in their winter. And then the, the heat, whew, brutal. Yeah. Stud. I well, along the uh, the lines of running across things, mm -hmm. someone else who has been drumming up some controversy, Paul Johnson. Yeah, yeah, I've you know I have checked in on him. I think, and you know, it's it's a weird time these days. I mean, because I saw some I saw people that were pretty critical of him, and they're saying because what I gathered is he was going to go for the record of running across America. Follow me across the United States on foot, attempting to break the world record by crossing in only 40 days. And the record was 42 days. So the, the critics are saying that 
yeah, he said he was gonna go after the world record and that's, that's how he drummed up interest and sponsorships and, you know, donations, I don't know. And then four days into the run, the 42 day run, if he's in, in fact going after the record, four days into it, he recalibrated and said, not going after the record anymore, can't do it. Now it's just about raising money for charity just a great charity. I think it's uh, RWB, I believe it is. And it's, uh, I think, for veterans. So great ch charity. But people were upset because gave up on the what he billed as the world record right. chase. Gave up on it so quick because if you're four days in to a 42-day run, you know, that's you just got started. That's like quitting, you know, five miles in or 10 miles in to a 100-mile race. Right. It's like... I've run the, the first 10 miles don't even matter. You know, you can, right. if you feel good, feel bad, it doesn't matter. You got 90 miles to figure it out. Well, first four days of that, whatever, whether you you felt good or felt bad, really doesn't matter. You're gonna have plenty of time to make up for it. So to right. just throw in the towel that quick, that's what got people's attention. It was like saying, well, was this a publicity stunt just to get money? Right. Because if you just say that, it's different. If you say you're going after the record, people are looking at it and following it way differently than if you say, I'm doing this run for charity. Yeah. I mean, I, I think he just crossed halfway and I don't know how many days he's at, but he's mm. past where he should be as far as the uh, amount of days he's taken to get to halfway. So, you mean he's behind ske record schedule? Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. I, I saw, I, it's kind of weird for me. I kind of checked in. I saw this. This guy was uh, made this video, you know, kind of talking shit about him and, and just the whole thing. And I was like, hmm, I didn't know that much about it. So I listened to the video and I, I thought, oh, I could kind of see that. I mean, yeah. I, that makes sense to me a little right. bit. I could see why people might wonder what the motives were, you know, right. by changing so fast. And so then I started, you know, checking in on Paul. That's what controversy does. They say, you know, there, any coverage is good coverage or whatever they say. And, uh, and it caused me to go look at what he's doing. So it worked right. in that regard. And then I saw where he was like talking about the haters a lot, which, you know, I have too. So I, I was like, well, fuck, that's me a little bit. But anyway, he says he's going to take his GPS tracking watches and put them on the outside of his jacket to fuck with the haters. And I was like, what? I don't understand. Yeah. If you, if you're doing it, you know, and it's all legit because I think people were questioning whether his heart rate matched matched his cadence. Like, and was he getting in a van right. or was, well, I don't know what, and taking a drive and then keeping the watch going or somebody else is wearing the watch and maybe what that's why it didn't, you know, that's how he was getting the miles during the day. And maybe there are some shenanigans going on. So instead of just saying, no, here's my data, here it all is, he doubles down on the, on do I have something to hide by putting the watches on the outside of Jack? And he says, just to screw with the haters. It's just like, well, if you're legit, just show your data. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like that alienates his supporters too. Cause now they have nothing to point to like, look that, you know, the data is okay. Yeah. And, that, <laughs> and now you just fucked that up. So it's like, I yeah. didn't, didn't make much sense to me, but part of this also <laughs> is, you know, when I'm in the middle of a long endurance event and I've never done anything like this, but you know, when I've run 200 miles, if I'm halfway in it, I'm probably not making great decisions. So if he's the one making these, these decisions on, I'm gonna put my watch in the outside of my jackets and he's been going for three weeks, Yeah, he's probably not making the best mental decisions. Yeah, so, right. you know, I'm not trying to make an excuse for him, but I, hopefully somebody who is, pretty clear thinking is uh helping him <laughs> make decisions but i don't know it's that was weird to me I, I just didn't really get what the point was because as you said you got people who do believe you and believe in right. you give them something to point to 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 say okay see and normally if you do that you don't even have to say anything your right. followers or your supporters will do the fighting for you but now you're you're taking away any tool they had to, to argue on your behalf. Yeah. No, I, I think, uh, it'll be interesting to see the rest of his run. And, and, and now I guess the, the data will be incomplete when he gets to the end. But <laughs> I don't, I really don't get it unless he has an, 
I don't, I don't, wouldn't think he's wearing three watches, but he had two and they're both on the outside of his jacket, which I don't get it. I mean, it just, whatever. I mean, if you're going to run 3000 miles, give your best effort. Don't give up on the record. Yeah. Cause who knows, maybe the second half he feels incredible and right. maybe he makes back up, but he already said he gave up. On, well, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure he could get back in the game, but also people, critics might say, well, because when you go for the record, you have to have all that data, right? Otherwise it's not going to yeah, count. Right. Guinness book or whoever's keeping track of it. will want to look at all that. So when you say you're not going for the record now, now it doesn't really matter. So, now, even if you, and I'll just play devil's advocate, even if you cheat, you could just say, well, look how much money I, I gained right. for this charity. Or, right. you know, I mean, I did this and it here's a positive from it. But is there shenanigans going on? Because now you can say, well, it's not about the record. So now do you get in the van? And I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. It just seems, it just, why put that doubt? Why, why even, you could have just, you could have just squelched all that. So I don't know. Part of me, I could, I could argue both sides right? and see points on both sides. I hope it's legit. It's an impressive, definitely an impressive accomplishment. If he can get across, you know, cover 3000 miles right. and I don't care how long. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, props for that but i don't know the the circumstances and the way he's addressed different uh criticisms it doesn't make sense to me but no didn't make sense to me either along those lines do you think you know responding to a hit piece is is better than just letting it be or even you know responding to cancel culture you know i mean if people are just talking shit about me just in general just like oh i can't he's a douchebag whatever i'm just like okay fine when people lie, like Matt Ranella lied about me, said I was hunting drugged up elk on beta blockers or this or that. Okay, well, that's just stupid. And I'm, I did respond to that because yeah. I, I don't care if you don't like me. I don't care if you talk shit, but don't lie. Yeah. And so I think if it's just normal shit talking, no, just let it go because that's always going to happen. And it's actually, it's harmless. Who gives a fuck what they say? But if they're making up lies and then, of course, I know it's a lie, but other people reading it, they don't know. So I have to address that. Yeah, but it's it's a lot easier to focus on the negative than it is on the positive. That's yeah, for sure. So I'm not I'm not doing background checks on every every person I see on there or every person that I take a, a nugget from. And it's like, oh, okay, that's seems like pretty solid advice. Of course, any person, unless you're Jesus. <laughs> You're going to have, you're going to be crucified. Yeah. And even he was crucified. So, I, I mean, that is, it's interesting, you know, can you not listen to the the positive things people say just because of the negative things that mm -hmm. people assume they've done? You know, does that mean we have to discredit everything they've done that's, that's positive in the world? Yeah. I mean, and I'm not trying to insert myself in anything, but I got people who follow me who don't hunt, don't get hunt, get why hunting or killing animals, but still are motivated or, or inspired by the uh, active lifestyle, the running, the lifting. And so, yeah, they're able to ignore the hunting part, which they don't understand right. and just take what they do understand or what they can use for themselves. And I mean, is, I, isn't that how we sh all should be? And I, and I, I know that, um, yeah, it'd be a moral dilemma on some certain things for certain people on, um, regarding, different topics, but, uh, that's just the way the world goes. I mean, that's, that's part of being human. Yeah. Well, with your lifestyle, I've noticed you're wearing a, a new hoodie. Did we just drop a new, a new merch launch? Yeah. This one smells kind of like BO actually. <laughs> I think, I don't think they can smell through the cameras. Oh, so. they can't. <laughs> it's not a scratch and sniff. <laughs> yeah. They're not watching. It's like going, <laughs> um, yeah. So it's the all black collection. And it's, uh, it goes along the theme with that truck I'm giving away, the TRX, the uh, what you do in the dark matters. And also, so there's a couple different versions of maybe to explain that meaning. We are taught to fear the dark, but for me, 
I thrive there. Knowing most people are warm in their beds sleeping while I'm out there grinding has always driven me to work hard and to outlast the rest. What you do in the dark matters. So ask yourself, are you doing enough? My team and I wanted to put more meaning behind this year's truck giveaway and spark the ember that starts the fire. We need your help turning it into a wildfire and sharing hashtag what you do in the dark because it matters. Keep hammering. So as part of it is, you know, when people have full-time jobs and they still got to earn that edge, they still got to put in the work that has to happen at night sometimes. You know, it's, uh, we're just getting out of winter where the the nights are long, the days are short. So to get our miles in or, or push the weights like we need to, it's going to have, have to happen in the dark. So that's kind of what I do a lot of running at night after everybody goes to bed. I love, I love out grinding on the streets when everybody's in their house sleeping. Cause I feel like, okay, yeah, you fucking pussies. Look at me. I'm out here working. You're chilling, watching TV or sleeping. So mentally it gave me an, it's always given me an edge, but another meaning to that, what you do in the dark matters is, uh, you know, the darkness of life, the different seasons in life. We go through challenges and it's how we respond to those challenges. So when you go put your head down, get to work, address it, move on, do whatever you got to do. Uh, that's how we get through those, those low points, the dark seasons of our life to, I hate that word seasons. I don't know why I used it. I guess I'm, yeah, I'm an influencer, but you go through these dark seasons of your life and then you come out and you, and you reach the mountaintop again, but that only happens through work and through just, you know, doing hard things. And, uh, so that's what it means to me that what you do in the dark matters. It's like, yeah, everybody's going to face these trials and tribulations in life and, uh, how we respond to it is going to determine our future. We can, we can just wallow in pity and misery and, probably not a lot's going to change or we can just say, yeah, this happened. Fuck it. I got to get to work and I'm going to, I'm going to dig my way out of this. Right. And so that's what the tagline means to me. It's uh, it's, well, it's both meanings, but to me, it's like, Hey, everybody's been kicked in the nuts. What are you going to do? You're going to, you're going to keep going, you know, it's hard to brush off a kick in the nuts, but <laughs> first, after first you're going to double down yeah, or double over in pain, right? After that, <laughs> Once that pain subsides, after you puke, <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? And you just got to get to work. And so, uh, yeah, that's what it means to me. And we got, you know, sweet hoodies, hats, t-shirts. Anyway, it's just kind of cool. And then also, I can't wait to give away this truck. And people, you know, they, I guess I don't expect everybody to pay attention to everything I do. But I get people commenting, oh, what happened to the other truck? It's like, well, I fucking made 10 posts about it. I gave it away in 10,000 cash and the guy came out, got it. It was awesome. Super pumped to give him the keys and the cash. And it was incredible. And yeah, you missed it. So yeah, <laughs> we're giving away this truck too. Then I saw somebody else said something like, uh, um, how oh, is this going to be another year long giveaway? Which the other one was the other one was 120 days, so I know it seems like a long time to everybody if you're waiting to win a truck. But this one, I decided to cut it back because you know I don't even know how the final numbers worked out. I don't really care if it makes money. It doesn't whatever. That's not the obje objective. The objective for me is just to give back, do something cool, change somebody's life essentially. Because even if you don't want the truck, you can sell that that rig and you know, you're going to get, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. I mean, I think it's a $120,000 truck, so you could sell it for 80 for sure. And then I'm giving you 10 also, you should get $90,000 in cash. Um, and that's the, that's what I want to do. I want to give back. And so I'm doing it in 90 days this time you buy a hat or a shirt. I think there's, there's also, so People that don't know these giveaways, there's laws and rules and guidelines. Some states don't allow it because I think they consider it like a uh, lottery. And like in Florida, I don't think they allow it. Um, but most states do. And it's uh, it's just a way to give back. And it's like you can, there's free entries. I think by entering your email, there has to be a free entry option. But also when I do certain, like the first, week of the giveaway every dollar you spent got you 10 entries and so there's different things like that but in general is you know you buy a, a 
a hoodie for whatever it is, 50 bucks, you get 50 points in and thrown in the entry pool to be drawn to win the truck. So um, just big picture. If you buy something, it increases your odds. If you don't, you still have a chance. Somebody's gonna win it in 90 days and I, I can't wait. We'll fly you out here. If you wanna tr try to carry that fucking rock up the hill, I'll let you do that. But in general, all I wanna do is I wanna give you the keys to that TRX. It's a badass truck. I wanna give you 10,000 in cash and <laughs> that's gonna make me smile. And that's all I care about. And, and just to make sure employees can't win that truck, I can't believe I pay you already. I mean, <laughs> well, we figured it, this out on the last one. And this is an internship. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you're an intern. Yeah. Then you can win it. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's a, it's a, it's a cool giveaway and we're not done yet. You know, I mean, that's not, I'm, I'm, we're just getting warmed up. Yeah. I'd love to give away a truck every month. Yeah. To be honest. That'd I be would, awesome. I would love it. It's, uh, I feel lucky to be able to do this. I feel lucky to have the influence I have. And I'm just trying to, you know, kind of dodge and weave those hit pieces as they come. So you want to learn to bow hunt, huh? Well, I've partnered with Mountain Ops to bring back the lift run shoot experience. And I am inviting you to join us this year in Austin, Texas. Hosting us May 3rd through the 5th is Archery Country Pro Shop in Austin. And included in the ticket price is an all new Hoyt Alpha X bow, along with a dozen Eastern arrows, my signature Speedland running shoes, a full optics package, a bino harness, go ruck plate carrier, a Grizzly 45 quart cooler, an Origin Raptor kit, and of course, a fat stack of Mountain Op supplements. Not only do you get geared out to hunt, you get education on all things bow hunting. Go Hunt will even be there giving you guidance on the tag system in your state and other state opportunities to hunt. It will be a one-of-a-kind weekend with yours truly, and I can't wait to see you all there. For a limited time, we are offering listeners of the podcast 10% off of your ticket prices using code LRS Austin. That's for Lift Run Shoot Austin. And to find details on the event, go to mountainops.com. Black Rifle Coffee is celebrating a decade of coffee in 2024. They're the only coffee I drink, and supporting them is supporting veterans and the outdoor community. One of my favorite packages that I get on a monthly basis is a Black Rifle Coffee Club exclusive coffee roast. The only way you can get it is if you subscribe to the coffee club, and this month's coffee is a full-bodied roast, and it comes from the jungles of Brazil, Pink 79. The exclusive coffee club subscription gives you nothing but the best. It's a coffee of the month club where you get premium roast from the best farms worldwide. Black Rifle Coffee is America's coffee. It's veteran owned and operated. They support hunting and conservation and give back immensely to the veteran community. They're offering followers of the podcast 20% off on your first purchase to the coffee club or order on their site using code keep hammering to get America's coffee today. All right. So this podcast is, you know, a little bonus podcast. It's basically a week weekend or week update of what's going on in the, in the news. And we've had a couple hits and a couple misses, I think, on what we're talking about here. Um, the hits were Jasmine Paris, first female finisher at Barkley Marathon. Uh, incredible. That was, that was a hit. Uh, a miss was Paul Johnson. Not his effort. His effort has been incredible. But just how he's went about this whole uh, run across America, Transcon. And uh, I thought a little bit of what he's done has been a miss, but a lot of positives, a lot of things I can't take away, his, his fundraising and all that, and plus a big effort of running across 3,000, or running 3,000 miles across the country is incredible. So, I mean, nothing but props there, but uh, a little clunky on how he went about it. And then another hit that I would categorize would be, uh, oh yeah. <laughs> the hardest geezer who's just still kicking ass running the length of Africa plus kind of around the west side so just crushing it uh, I saw that yeah hardest geezer beast so that was a hit so we had hit miss hit and then the last is uh, something you brought up to me today and what was that <laughs> well why am I here <laughs> you're here because you wanted to bring this up because you see you saw this in oh, the yeah. news oh yeah I forgot no, I saw it on the gram. On the gram, yeah. yeah. Just something people have been talking about is that uh, 
New York Magazine, Huberman. And I thought you might want to bring it up because you're mentioned by it in name. Christian mm-hmm. Bowhunter, Cameron Haynes. What's your, uh, any takes on it or? <laughs> this uh, seems to be a pretty popular issue right now. God. Yeah, all hit pieces are usually generally popular. That's why they do them, right? Um, yeah, I have a lot of thoughts on it. I have a lot of thoughts for sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know if I'll get to everything I'd like to say. I just, uh, you know, I saw the piece, uh, I saw, I always mentioned, and I thought that was interesting how they mentioned that just the, uh, why the descriptor at the front, why a Christian bow hunter? Yeah. Um, because that's how they, that's how they separate people into different categories. If you're a Christian, if you're conservative, if you're, you know, uh, even being a patriot turned into a negative here over the last three year, three or four years. Um, so yeah, they can they can put people in this group, and the, that group is like red pill type people. You know, the conspiracy theories, uh, Christian conservative, just like we said. And then on the other side is the leftists, the liberal media, the legacy media kind of controls that, and that's where a magazine like New York Magazine came in with their section of the magazine called the intelligencer and that's where they covered andrew huberman in a pretty blatant hit piece a one-sided hit piece actually and so yeah i saw i was mentioned um so the hit piece aside obviously it's super negative for huberman in the article if you read it but what's your i mean you've hung out with him how is he mm -hmm. how's he been to you and your interactions with him yeah i mean that's kind at the end of the day, that's really all the only way you can judge somebody, right? Your personal interactions with them. And, uh, you know, if, <laughs> I don't know, it's when you write an article like that, it seems like it started off, I think it was supposed to be a fluff piece to start off because they want to latch on to Huberman and his success. And uh, he doesn't need a magazine to cover him. He's got, you know, millions of people following him. So it, when I don't know if there was, you know, they didn't respond or I don't know what happened, but it went from a fluff piece and in, into a hit piece. And then you can find negative on pretty much anybody. But as far as me and, and, uh, what I know about Andrew, he's been nothing but respectful, kind, generous, um, uh, been here at the family, ate, we shared meals, worked out, had a great podcast. And, uh, you know, I think this, that article covered maybe previous relationships. I'm not sure when this was, um, but you know, as we talked about, he had, he has, uh, you know, taken, been taking the path down the journey of faith and uh, reading the Bible in the morning and different things like that. Maybe, maybe this is part of just personal growth. I don't know. And maybe, I don't know what's true or not, what's not, to be honest. I haven't, I haven't talked to him. I haven't asked him, but I just know that, you know, there's nobody walking this earth that's perfect, including me. And, uh, I just don't like hit pieces like that, that just latch onto this, ne- take this negative tone, negative direction, and just, just in general, a way trying to cancel somebody or maybe not even cancel somebody, but just do what they did. We're talking about it. So they got what they wanted. They got the attention they wanted. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody's weighing in on it. And that's, I mean, media companies like this and like magazines and like TV shows, they use this clickbait. They use these, these crazy headlines because they're dying. They're dying. No, I mean, it makes sense why if I'm the magazine, it makes sense why I would do something like this because obviously people are going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. The motive and the intent is there. You take a big name, you shit on them. People are going to want to know why. Mm -hmm. And they, because everyone respects them. Yeah. And uh, one thing that I noticed though is, uh, you know, this slam piece comes out, they're taking all these shots at him. The next day or two days later, he remained post just a science video back to business as usual Mm -hmm. just doing his thing still talking about science how to make things how to make your life a little better and it's like that's professional yeah i mean i respect that because a a normal dipshit like me would want to lash back out 
and make a post and, you know, say people are full of shit, say this is a lie, this is that. What about this person? Did you look into that person who's saying these things about me? That would, that's what I would do. <laughs> I would stoop to their level. What, okay, it's, it's hard not to. Oh, yeah. I mean, what, what he's done is, you know, what he does, what he loves to do, which is share his knowledge of science. And so if he's back to that, I don't know. I don't know if he's going to have a response. The The article was one-sided, um, seemed like a, a lot of hearsay or, I mean, I know they mentioned text, but God, you could send me some crazy text and I could change your name and my phone to Andrew, take a screenshot and say, look what Andrew Huberman sent me. I mean, text don't mean anything. And this isn't like any laws were broken. There's no nothing crazy happened, no assaults, nothing like, I mean, you would think that if they want to get dirt on somebody, I mean, what they had was pretty tame. Yeah. In the grand scheme of things. Well, I mean, I don't know nothing about nothing, but Mm -hmm. they're not discrediting his, his science or his, Mm -hmm. his, everything that he studied and all that. And there's no discrediting any of that. It's just like, they have to dig up some, what just, just relationships whatever stuff. they can mm-hmm. and i don't know it really doesn't i just don't even think it's relevant i don't i mean i don't think it's worthy of an eight thousand word article about somebody just basically mudslinging but uh you know i don't know i i know i know relationships can be tough and i don't want to discount the feelings that any woman may have had you know you know heartbreak hurts and if somebody breaks up with you it's not fun. It's painful. So I get it. I don't want, I don't want to discount any of that. You know, I just, I just don't like the way they went about exposing what or whatever in a negative tone in a way to what feels like tear down somebody who's been very accomplished, who has a lot, has made a a huge positive impact on society. And, uh, I just don't like it. Um, but, and you know, as we've talked about, my interactions have all been positive. So, of course, I'm going to be a little biased. You know, I mean, no, that's all you can base. That's all you can base a man off of. Yeah, you can hear whatever from anybody. People talk shit about people all the time. Yeah, and people talk shit about like my friends or me or whatever. And it's like, if just base it off of an interaction with them, mm-hmm. it's just, it's different. Yeah, and mm-hmm. uh, yeah. It's, just, I just, I'm not going to throw stones at people just because I live in a glass house myself. So I don't want stones coming back at me. It's just, it's a little bit frustrating to, to read. And I saw Lex Friedman had a nice post about Huberman. He knows Huberman much better than I do. They've worked together a lot. And um, so that's another one who's had per- personal interactions with them and, you know, shared that. And uh, so I don't know. It's, uh, I'm not a fan of the tactic personally. Um, but I guess it was effective for New York magazine. No, that's a, I don't know. That's the right take to take on it. I think Mm -hmm. some good insight. So, uh, what's on the agenda for the rest of the week or what's, what's big coming up? What should people look out for? Well, yeah. I mean, we got the Bert Kreischer just sent me a text and announced the, uh, 5k in May. Hey, are you guys, are you guys going to run our, uh, 5k? Wait, 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 is it a specific place or just wherever you are? I want to bike it. 5K by May. Where is it? Jelly Roll's doing it. Cam Haynes is doing it. Is it a specific place or just mean? anywhere? Uh, they're gonna, we're going to do a 5K. So that's exciting. Where's that at? That Down in Pasadena. And I think it, he said May, did I say the date? I don't remember. May 7th. Tuesday, May 7th, 9 a.m. at the Rose Bowl. So that's that's going to be awesome. It's going to be electric. <laughs> I can't wait. So that's that's cool. Um, and then Cheeto's coming, isn't he? Cheeto's going to come on the podcast. That's exciting. Right be, before. It'll be good when he's savage. Oh, such a stud. Right before UFC 300. So we're going to do the lift run shoot with Cheeto. And then we're all heading down to UFC 300 doing an origin takeover. They're a big sponsor of the UFC now. So Jocko, Pete. Uh, I think a bunch of guys are going to be there. It's going to be fun. Kip. Yeah. Kip. <laughs> Uncle Kip. I know. Uncle Kip. He's a beast. But uh, yeah, that's coming up. And uh, we got Speedland coming this week. So be on the lookout for some new shoes. That's that's exciting. I'll have some new shoes to share. And uh, 
Oh, I wanted to ask you, you watch mm. the new Roadhouse? I did. <laughs> yeah. What's your Rotten Tomatoes review? Oh man. Connor, Oscar? Oscar? <laughs> Connor's a handful on Be- that one. Best supporting actor? Connor's a handful. Uh yeah, I mean it was about what you'd expect. Over the top, uh, pretty fun, uh good fight scenes. I mean, Jake and and Connor got after it in the bar. Is I it- saw I saw a clip of them on Instagram doing yeah. the fake fighting. Mm-hmm. It looks pretty damn real. Yeah. It was I don't know how the screenwriting it. I didn't I don't watch it. It's uh, Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It was uh you it's, know. No, it's no departed. <laughs> no, it's no it's no departed. Uh but it was entertaining, I'll say that. And I was there for the fight when Jake he was supposed to be a, a disgraced UFC fighter, right? So he went, he killed a guy in the ring, I think, by going too far. Um, now I can't, I think that's how it happened. Now I can't even remember that part of the movie. But uh, it seems memorable. Yeah. <laughs> but I think he killed a guy in the octagon. And I was there because it's the middle of one big card. And they had Jake and the actor come out, all these different cameras. So there was like a 10 minute break during the normal UFC card. And they filmed this fight scene. and. Jake was like, he was into it. He wanted to redo it. He's like, do it again. You know, they said, you know, they'd announce two more minutes or something like that. And he'd like spray himself down with the water bottle or the spray bottle, get back in there, just go, go, go. And I think him redoing the take a number of times, I think probably, cause I was watching the whole time right there. I think the last take, the one where he just kind of tried to fit it in at the very end was the one they used. So it's like, I was pretty impressed by how committed he was to that scene. And I think he was a producer of the movie actually too. Or, I mean, he had something to do with the making of it, not just acting. Um, And you could tell he had a vested interest in it and he cared about that scene, nailing it. So yeah, respect to him. He looked good. Definitely in shape, freaking shredded. Connor looked just, you know, on all the Mexican supplements, just huge, jacked. No, he's on creatine. Oh, creatine. That's what, I, yeah. Yeah, no, that's it. <laughs> creatine and ashwagandha. <laughs> well, whatever he's on, it worked because he, he looks jacked in that thing. But, uh, you know, always been a big Connor fan. I Mostly just him in the UFC is what I want to see him back and at, you know, being a showstopper like he he has been for most of his career. I think it's kind of sick that like a dude from whatever small town Ireland, like, you know, going to go be UFC champ. He is. And then it's like, like what? That's making it. Like the dude's in a movie with Jake Gyllenhaal now. I know. Starting from fighting. And it's like, and that, that guy's awesome. I think I read that he was the highest paid, like, if that was, I don't know if it's a rookie, I don't know what, what they call a new actor, but their first first role, he was the highest paid for a first time actor, I think is what I read. That's impressive. So he's, I mean, just, he's just been, you know, you think, you watch that old uh, Connor documentary when he was living in the upstairs bedroom of his mom's house. And he was still talking like he was gonna buy her a car, buy, have nice cars, he was gonna be, you know, UFC champion. And talking just these crazy dreams. That's, he's uh, he's that's, exceeded them. That's manifesting. Yeah. So I'm just going to manifest that Connor comes on the podcast. Hopefully, oh. hopefully he hears this. I think you'd have a good time, Connor. I know. I want to give him those Ireland colored speed lands. Oh, yeah. You got custom shoes here. Yeah. Come on. Come on, dog. Yeah, I know. I mean, hey, speak it into existence. He's been doing that his whole career. You know, he's he did it with this movie. He did it with everything that he's accomplished. And uh, man, nothing but respect for how hard that guy is, has worked and how successful he's been. It's, uh, it's a crazy story from rags to riches and th- at the highest order. Love it. I was curious. So you uh, mentioned Barkley, the hardest geezer. We're coming up into running season. People would probably think that we talk about this all the time, but me and you really don't talk about like races or stuff coming mm-hmm. up. So, I mean, you got anything, anything big or what about like a, an unofficial big thing, transcon. Oh, the oldest man <laughs> to go transcon. Yeah. Anything, uh, anything in the cards? Man, I don't know. Well, I'm going to do the Eugene marathon. We know that. 
Mm. I'm going to do, it's pretty tame. going to do another <laughs> ultra be, before the Eugene marathon. I know it's another pretty tame one. I'm doing the big thing is the 5k in May. Oh yeah. Two bears. 3.1 miles nonstop. So, um, no, I mean, I'd like to, you know, True has been talking about, we were, when he was just here, we talked about running across America. Um, but I don't know, man, that's a, that's a big effort. So that the record is 42 days. I think we talked about that. Oh, so now you're talking about records. <laughs> no, no, break, no. Break the record no, of it? No, I'm just saying that. So if the record's 42 days, you could plan for sure on spending, you know, 60 days. That's two months. You know, I. Yeah. Well, we were watching that British dude, William. Yeah. William. Was it good? Yeah. Goody. Yeah. Something like it. There was an yeah. extra letter thrown in there, but. Mm. I mean, their production of it, following along. I was watching all the the vlogs of it. And it's yeah. like, this dude's a savage. Yeah, like that's a big. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's a big run. Yeah, no, it's it's a huge effort, and that's why I can't. I, I'm not going to shit on this Paul Johnson too much. He's fucking doing it. I think he's on pace now. For let me think, I think it was thirty some thirty seven days to, and he's halfway. Oh, uh, well, remember I showed you that clip in that British guy, Williams, Yeah, where he was running for 20 days or something and he was reading the comments mm -hmm. and uh, his coach, uh, what's his, Robbie or? Yeah, I think it was Robbie. Yeah. He was just like, dude. Because he'd done it before too. Robbie had. Yeah. And he was yeah. like, you can't be reading that. He's like, no one else is trying to do this. Yeah. He's like, you're the only one. And then by the end, the guy was running. 60 miles a day. Mm -hmm. He was like, cr he got stronger the whole time. Got in a groove. Yeah. I mean, I, that's why good, I can't. Good lesson to be learned. Oh, I know. That's where, you know, this guy who's doing it right now, he is really deep in on the comments every day and always addressing it. So I think that's a. a I feel like you just got to ignore it. I think so too. I think, you know, cause he is kicking ass now. He started off, I think a little behind what his, his announced schedule was going to be. So he got beat up for that a little bit. Um, and it was mostly just because I think people were thinking that he didn't, wasn't respecting the challenge. He was talking about that it wasn't going to be that hard. And he, you know, I don't know. I, I, that's the feeling I get from the ultra or the endurance community is that, um, yeah, just didn't well, show respect to the challenge. But he's a little man in the arena. Yeah. Well, yeah, no shit. Yeah. He's out there doing it. So it's really easy for everybody to have an opinion. Yeah. But I do think to your point, I do think that's a, a some good advice. You can't be, I mean, when you're running 60, 70 miles a day, you can't be reading fucking comments. What, what are you doing? No, I mean, you do that. Yeah. yeah I'm not running 60 or 70 miles a day <laughs> though. But when, if I was, it'd be all that energy. I, I mean, you're wasting it even if it's mental energy by reading yeah, negative uh, stuff. Emotional yeah, energy. Yeah, mental, emotional. Uh, it's just, you gotta be locked in on the effort because it's huge. It's a huge effort and it's it deserves respect. So um, yeah, I mean, whatever. People, people are critical on anybody doing big things. And uh, yeah, so I, I mean, I don't wanna be overly critical on, on Paul's effort because he's fucking, he is the man in the arena and uh, deserves respect. So he's got it from me, but. So big things coming up, big uh, podcast, Burt Kreischer's run, mm -hmm. new shoes maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, people have a lot to be excited about. Yeah. A lot of good content coming. Yep, yep, it's fun. This is, uh, we've had a good time with this and we had a couple different co-hosts on this one. We had James Gideon. Yeah. I mean, I, I want to get used to me being on here. You did a good job, James. You guys both do. I, I mean, you guys both are very good at this. So I had to jump in for James this time. He had a big, disgusting zit and he really didn't want to be on camera. Yeah. No. So I was like, fuck. All right, I'll do it. I think it was because it was in, you know, it was right here in between his eyes and he kept looking. So his eyes are a little cross now from staring at that zit. Yeah. I mean, it was gross. Yeah. It was and pretty gross. Hopefully his eyes go back to normal. Yeah. I don't know. Any, <laughs> do you want to interject? I can't defend myself. <laughs> oh, turn, there, on, there turn, on, a mic. turn on your mic as fast as possible. Is this, this is on now. Okay. So what do you got to say? Um, everything they said is true. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Well, I just want to thank James Gideon Williams, Tanner, Jonathan Haynes. Thank you for helping along on this weekly podcast, the, up, the weekly update hits and misses. And uh, yeah, it's been fun. We're going to keep kicking ass. Thank you guys for tuning in and uh, keep hammering. All right, guys. Welcome to the brand new CameronHaze.com truck giveaway. This truck used to be red, but we got this sick badass wrap on it to go with the theme of this giveaway, what you do in the dark matters. That means we gotta train at night. We gotta get better, we gotta earn that edge at night. So what you do in the dark matters out there getting in those miles, maybe shooting in the driveway in the headlights of a, of a, of a truck, or maybe just pushing weights in the gym. We gotta do something to set ourselves apart. So that's where, hey, the night shift comes in. And this brand new 2023 Ram TRX, 702 horsepower, killer looking ride, is gonna to go to somebody who enters to win at CameronHaynes.com. Whoever that is, I'm gonna fly them out here. They're gonna get this ride. I'll hand them the keys and 10,000 in cash. And I hope it's you. So again, head to my website, figure out how to enter and win. Good luck, keep hammering.